to be cool. We're still cool. We're still cool. My mom says I'm cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, we're recording now. <laughs> yeah, we're on now. Ah, excellent. That's staying, well, by the way. That's our opening. Great. Oh, 100%. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to another episode of We're Not Helpful, a podcast about books, recommendations, our thoughts and opinions. I'm Eloise, and apparently I'm pretty cool because my mum says so. <laughs> <laughs> Joining me, as always, are Brayton and Julian. Brayton and Julian, are you cool? Um, I'm withholding until I get the results of the um, scientific studies I've ordered. <laughs> I think that's It's going to be a 10-year-long thing. It's costing the government a lot of money, but I think it'll be worth it. My taxpayer dollars fund this program. <laughs> I was cool once, then they changed what cool was. <laughs> now I'm that. So, yes, I am still cool. Uh, would, you, would you say that any young people listening, it will happen to them too? No one will stay as cool as I have, but, you know, you have to move with the times. <laughs> okay, good. And young people should know by now to stay off my lawn. <laughs> and to stop pissing me off, particularly really before need, midday. You really do need to stay off his lawn. I've seen what happens when you don't. Yeah. It's not mm. pretty. Right. It's great no. to start off a podcast with a threat like that. <laughs> well, Gentlemen, just have the, uh, have the solace in the fact that if you wait long enough, it everything you liked just becomes vintage and cool again. That's true. That is true. Everything comes back around and therefore cool again. How exactly has your right. week in book reading been? I don't think I've read a single book at all this last week. I did oh, start listening to a book, though, so that's something. Oh, well, that counts. That's something. Which, yep. which book have you started listening to? You know, I can't recall the name of it. <laughs> great start. We're off to a and great start. This is the level no, of no. professionalism oh. you come to expect. <laughs> I ask this yeah. question every it is, it is morning. A- it's a Michael Connolly book, Black Echo. I thought it was. I couldn't remember. Okay. I knew it was. There you go. It's a Michael Connolly book, Black Echo, the, the first of the appearance of Harry Bosch, which is one of his recurring detectives throughout throughout his novels. I don't know why I couldn't remember the name of it, but there it is. Clearly <laughs> making a huge impact on you. Oh, it's, it's good. It's actually the guy doing it is really good. He, he reads it in a very old kind of film noir sort of voice, so it's actually pretty cool. Nice. Excellent. Mm. It is getting a bit to the pointy end of the year as it is. So <clears throat> time, mm. unfortunately, can be a little bit precious, gets away from us. I unfortunately haven't read anything new as of yet. I'm still, I'm almost finished the first book in the Thursday Murder Club. I Yay. promise to get that <laughs> finished before the next recording and hopefully have started something different because I've got a few that I really, really want to get to and I've just not really been in a headspace to actually feel like reading at the moment, which is great when you run a podcast about books. So... And by the time you finish it, it'll be the Friday Murder Club. It will. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Brayton, what have you have you been reading anything recently? Uh, I actually just finished a Batman comic. Yay! Excellent. Which one? Comics are yep. great. Uh, Hush. I don't know it. No, it was it was good because D D C have come out with this D C compact comics initiative where they're getting like some of their most famous stories and putting them in almost like a manga kind of style. So it's just like a mm. small book. Mm. But they're really inexpensive. Like the whole thing for like eighteen dollars. Which comics can run up the cost pretty quickly. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Yeah. So I've I'm gonna be picking up a few of those, but I picked up Hush. Uh, the other week when I finished my other book that I had been reading, but I've read read that now, and now I'm on to something else. Excellent. Yay. I'm going to be on to something. I haven't started it yet because I only finished Hush yesterday, but I will be on to something else very soon. Don't know what exactly yet. Okay. Well, I look forward to hearing about it and always love to discuss comics even though I don't particularly read them myself. Um, the, the, you know what, the only actual comics that I have ever really read um, were the, the Buffy comics, uh, the continuing Buffy stories. I remember Buffy. you doing that. You binged all the show and then were like, I want more. 
I did, yes, I got hyper fixated on Buffy because I came to it super late. I, I binge watched it a couple of years ago. Um, I was just telling Julian before we started recording actually about how I'm, I really feel like I need to re-watch it from the beginning because I'm sure there are episodes that I've missed. And I think it was because I was watching it on a on my DVD box set and I think I must have skipped over a disc because I remember later on in the series they would reference stuff that I'm like, I don't recall that happening at all. So, hmm. like, Xander turns into a werewolf or something or some kind Oz's of creature? A werewolf. Oh, Xander turns into a hyena in season one. Yeah, I <laughs> I did not see that, so I have clearly skipped a disc. Look, you, it's early in season one. You may have seen it. It's not a great episode. You may have just banished it from your mind. Perhaps. Yeah. Is it maybe. just a case of because you watch so many so quickly, like the, like just Julian said, the worst episodes just kind of, didn't make an impact. That Season one was happen. rough. It, oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> it was. It does tend to like when you when you do binge watch something very quickly, things sort of fade into each other, and, and suddenly you can't remember what you've you've seen previously. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, I remember being very very obsessed with Buffy at the end of it, and then like must devour more, um, <laughs> and going out and finding all the comics, like either getting them off eBay or borrowing them from the library. So, and I hated the 12th season, like, because they were referred to as seasons, even, you know, mm. whatever. But the Buffy comics had sort of been handed over to other writers at some point, and then Joss Whedon, <laughs> boo, <laughs> um, <laughs> came in. Yeah. 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 Came in and uh, and he took over for like the last book, which was like volume twelve essentially, and he completely rewrote all of the character arcs that had happened before. So he broke Buffy and Spike up between those two editions. I hated that because I'm sorry. I know Julian and I have a bit of a difference of opinion. I'm a uh, a Buffy and Spike person. I didn't particularly think that Angel really was suited for Buffy. Um, come at me. <laughs> I'm you heard it here first, man. everyone. Come at her. <laughs> so I will hold back and simply say you are wrong. Uh, <laughs> not even you're entitled is, to your opinion. Is Just that You are wrong. not entitled to your opinion. <laughs> oh, okay. you, well, you All are. Right. But it's a wrong opinion. <laughs> you are wrong. All right. So then, Julian is saying Eloise is objectively wrong in this opinion. Okay. Yes. Excellent. Come at me or come and defend me. Who loves All me right. more? I don't know. Buffy Writing. fans, we want to hear from you. <laughs> we probably won't hear from Buffy fans because no one's Buffy fans anymore because we've all dropped it thanks to boo, here's mm. Joss Whedon, boo. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, now yet another heartbreaking thing. We spoke about that the last time on the podcast, yes. but we, we will move on and from there. Brayton, no obligatory season four of Angel mention from you. I'm disappointed. Oh, you, yes. You're talking about Buffy. You haven't talked about Angel. <laughs> it doesn't no. yes, I will say ob objectively season four of Angel is the best season of the entire Buffyverse. We know that you're just saying that to rile Julian up. <laughs> Absolutely. Because he's never but seen you Angel. don't believe it. I have never seen, I have not no. seen them. I will say, no though, opinion. season four of Angel has the best episode of the entire series in yeah, it. Yeah, thank you. True. Thank you. The Vindication. <laughs> but, you know, it's only because I think Faith is in it as well. And and anyway, David Boreon has actually finally learned how to act in that season. Oh, good. It, so. <laughs> it took to the fourth season of Angel for him to learn how to act. <laughs> Look, After... He was always charming, and in Angel he was always charismatic, but it was the fourth season, the episode Orpheus Descending, where he learned how to act. <laughs> At least, you know, he got there in the end. Fantastic. <laughs> and then it was cancelled, and then the next season. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. Anyhow. It was big news that we have just crossed the one-year anniversary mark. Hooray! We have. Hooray! One-year anniversary. Yep. I realised that we uploaded the first episode on Halloween night, oh, or at wow. least on Halloween day, um, one year ago. Yes. So It is from the 3rd recording... of, of November we are recording right now, so it was a few days yes. ago. You won't hear us in your ears until the 5th? Was that? Yes. No? Yes? 
Speaking yes. of, of Halloween, Brayton, if I may just do a little quick tease, uh, Brayton and I do have planned to yes. do another one of our one-offs about a niche and yet somehow much more popular these days than ever horror series. So stay yes. tuned for that one. It is unbelievable like how much that series has blown up. Just right. over the last few months, I think, yeah. I think I know yeah. what you're talking about. And yet have no idea what you're talking about because I have no desire to watch it. <laughs> I feel like we should force her to watch them. No. No. <laughs> but, yes, stay tuned. Stay tuned, stay tuned for that one in the next. Too old to be forced into things. I will kick and scream um, vehemently. <laughs> oh, good. It'll get you in the right he headspace for that movie. Uh, we wouldn't be able to pick them out from the, the characters <laughs> in the movies. Eh? Yeah. Okay. That in okay. <laughs> Brayton, anyway, have you got something special for us planned tonight. Yes, one year anniversary. It's something we've talked about in the past, maybe on camera, on record anyway, um, or off record. But we thought it would be fun because Eloise has always touted her encyclopedic <laughs> knowledge of the Tolkien verse. <laughs> I don't know if encyclopedic is the right word. Well, it like encyclopedic to the point where there's a book in my brain and sometimes I can't remember where the information is in the pages. So. Or whether it's actually the same book. Yeah. <laughs> mm. I'm going to be so embarrassed if I get this Yes, wrong. but anyway, <laughs> we thought kind of to oh, celebrate wow. our one year. Yeah, so kind of to celebrate our one year, we're just going to have a fun night where we're just going to ask Eloise some Middle Earth Lord of the Rings trivia questions and see how badly she does. Oh, uh, I'm going to freeze before we up start, and be like, I know these answers and I, yep. it's so embarrassing. Before we start the actual quiz, mm -hmm. there yep. is one piece of trivia we need to address that I don't think anyone knows yet. Oh, Viggo Mortensen <laughs> broke his toe <laughs> in the two oh, towers makes... where he kicks the orc's helmet and use that to yeah. act through that scream he did. I don't yes. know if anyone knows that yet. Um, it's the, I'm hearing this for the first trivia. time. Mm, that's brand new. <laughs> Heard it here first, guys. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, you have no idea how many times we'll be having a conversation and suddenly one of these two will just mm. yell, do you know where you got and broke his toe with a thing? Like, it's true, though. He I did. Know it's, I know. but it, And he <laughs> used that. That's he acting. He did use mm. it. <laughs> like, if oh, there is a, if there is a <laughs> man that is more manly than Viggo Mortensen, who I think also knocked a tooth out and just wanted it super glued back in to keep filming. Yes, he did do that too. Like, he, amazing. Possibly Nick Offerman. Oh, ah, yes, very true. He is amazing. Nick Offerman as Aragorn would be a sight to see. Yeah, oh, <laughs> don't get me started. <laughs> and if he keeps the moustache, he has his Ron. Yes. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> Ron Swanson just as Aragorn. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that. In fact, I, gonna, I can right now. Yeah, okay. I was going to give you another piece of trivia that I saw the other day. Apparently, you know, the very famous one does not simply walk into Mordor where Sean Bean has yep. like got his hand oh, yes, I heard this. like that. So apparently, he was reading the script off of his knee. That's why he's got his head down yep. like that. Because Peter Jackson gave him the script that morning. Well, yeah, because apparently it was like the most rewritten scene because they couldn't figure out how to do the Council of Elrond properly without it being a massive exposition dump. But it also is, because... if I remember correctly, it's like fifty page long chapter in the book of just people chapter. sitting and talking. And it also involves in a, a ton book? of no. stuff that they had <laughs> cut out as well. So they cut out from the mm. film. So everything to do with like um uh, the conspiracy of Merry and Pippin knowing that that Frodo was going to go off. Um, like, it, there wasn't, it's different in the film where it's a chance meeting on the road. Like, it was this whole planned mm. thing that Merry and Pippin knew about. Um, but then there's like everything that happens in Brie in the book is, is wildly different to the movie because, like, there's more characters. Uh, characters that don't appear in the film, um, conspiracy there, and all of that's discussed. And then they discuss the fact that um, the Mirkwood elves had captured Gollum and that he escaped from Mirkwood and then there was argument about the elves letting him go. And, yeah. There's, so a new, there, there's the movie in development right now go. about that. I don't want that film. I'm sorry. I don't think it's necessary. And the fact that... <laughs> 
I love Orlando Bloom and I love Ian McKellen and I love Viggo Mortensen. They are all too old. I am <laughs> sorry. They are too old to be playing those characters again. Especially yeah, I don't Viggo know how Mortensen they're going to do it. Orlando Bloom. Like Ian McKellen can get away with it because he was old and had like massive beard and hair and everything. But Orlando Bloom and Viggo Mortensen were young and it's supposed to be when they're still young. So I don't know. Are they yeah. going to de-age them? Uh, I just don't think it's necessary. I don't. Sorry. I can't. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> All right. Quiz time. Do you want to get into this? I do. So I have scoured the internet for some trivia. Scoured. I tried tried to keep it mostly about what happened in The Hobbit, Lord of the Rings, and some stuff from the appendices. Can so I ask, get... is this going to be book or film or both? Uh, I tried to keep it book. Okay. Okay? Okay. Or if, if there is something in here, it's not contradicted by either the film or the, All right. or the, the um, book. That's the word. Sure. Right. They, they start off pretty easy and then progressively get a bit more difficult as we go along. Wow. I think there are 11 or 12 questions i got here, so let's see how you do. Okay. All right. Very Julian, nice. are you confident? No. Ah, fuck Perfect. you. No, right. no, not even a little. In fact, uh, I'm very unconfident. <sighs> Lovely. Well, you you weren't the one bragging about how much you know about Lord of the Rings. <laughs> I, I don't have to answer the questions, do I? You don't. You can if you want. Oh, if I you want know the answer. Trying to answer them first. <laughs> All right. Sure. <laughs> Question number one. True. <laughs> Correct. Yes. <laughs> All right. One nil. He's ahead. Brilliant. Okay. Let me just get this set up so I can actually see you both and my questions in the same screen. Oh, that didn't work. Oh, that, that made Need it worse. a second monitor. Oh, I know. One day when camera I'm rich one, and famous. Camera two. There we go. Camera one, camera two. Okay, question number one. Who wrote Lord of the Rings? J.R.R. Tolkien. Tolkien. <laughs> what? You said Tolkien. Is... That counts as a mistake. Yep. Tolkien. Right. That is wrong. <laughs> it's Moops. It's Moops. <laughs> not, not just who wrote it. What is his full name? <gasps> oh, um... Fuck. I knew I should have Henrietta? Oh, no, no, wrong. Fuck is so... not correct. <laughs> That's uh, fuck Scott Fitzgerald. <laughs> I want to say Jonathan. I'm sure George is one of the G's. His his first name, his first name, what G's? G's? What am I talking about? I think you're George R. R. Oh, we are not off to a good start. <laughs> J.R.R. Tolkien. Hang on. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. So John, I will no. say his his first name is John. The J is for is John. Jimmy Jojo Shabadoo. <laughs> that is the worst name I've ever heard. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, wait, Jojo, Jojo. This is great uh, listening. I'm sure people are just you know fascinated. No, sorry. Okay, J R R. So it's so we John. know it's John, and we know it's Tolkien at the end. Oh. Is one of them like Reynolds or something? Very close, yes. Uh, it's terrible. I should know the actual, what did the initials stand for? <laughs> <laughs> I knew this would trick you up on the first question. Uh, yes, it would. Oh. That's not easy. No one knows. I don't even this. know how to pronounce that second R name. Yeah, it's I like, know. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're strange names. It's like I'll give, you, I'll give you a hint for the first R McDonald's. Mm. Oh, uh, Ronald. Yeah. yeah John Ronald. Ronald. Uh, yeah, that's what I was thinking, Ronald in my head. Um, mm. uh, it's something like Rafa Raphael or something. Yeah, you're on, you're on the right track. Yeah. No, I, I don't know. I can't remember. No. John Ronald Ruel Tolkien. Ruel. That's I think I'm pronouncing that right. R-E-U-E-L. Sure. Please correct us if we're wrong. Yes, mm. please do. Although I love the internet meme that his full name is Jolkin, Rolkin, Rolkin, Tolkien. <laughs> it's right up there with Part Blart, Mark Cart. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All 
I wonder if the same people come up with this with the good omens joke about Crowley's mm. name being Anthony Janthony Crowley because it's a Anthony J Crowley. <laughs> so they say Janth I hope so. Mm. It's prob it probably is. <laughs> um, what do you think, Julian? Should we give her a half mark for that? <laughs> give her half. Give her half. She was on. She was she on the right least, track. You're Tolkien, right? At least. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, she said token at first. So I don't I, know. she did. It's I do have a wrong. problem talking sometimes. <laughs> All right. Question two: What year was Lord of the Rings first published? Ooh, it was in the fifties. It was. Um, I want to say fifty-two. Fifty-two. Yeah, could be wrong. Julian, have you looked up an answer yet, or do you want to take a I swing? I haven't. <laughs> I haven't had. I, I want to say fifty-six. Okay, 52 and 56. You're both either side of it, 54. Oh, dress. <laughs> yeah, but my number was sexier. <laughs> <laughs> sure. All right. That's, you heard that's it. the two. You it. <laughs> yep. That is the two non fiction questions done. Okay. Question number three What creature is Gollum? Oh, he's a Stuart Hobbit. Got it. Stuart Hobbit, which we actually met in the new Rings season of, of Rings of Power. Which I don't think, what, in that time frame, he wouldn't have been born yet. No, 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 no. I mean... Because no, hobbits, hobbits have long lives, but not like long, long lives. No, I mean, technically, canon, canonically speaking, the hobbits don't turn up until the third age anyway, so <laughs> they are not yeah. in Brayton, the second what have you age. Done? <laughs> I know they wouldn't have even settled the Shire yet. No, 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 no. I mean, they're <laughs> they're all around like the Misty Mountains at the moment, and they start migrating out, and that's when like the three tribes sort of depart from each other, and mm. and the people that Smeagol was descended from are like people who are near the river. And yeah, okay. Next question. <laughs> yeah. Good job. I I'll take your word for it. Okay. <laughs> Actually, I I know I know what Smeagol because that Smeagol was his name, his actual name. Yes. Yes. They they lived on the eastern side of the Misty Mountains near the river. I can't remember the river's name. Yeah, I can't Listen. recall either. Yeah. But it was close to the Misty Mountains. Yes. Okay. Well, yeah, question number four. Where is Legolas from? Mirkwood. Correct. <laughs> Bonus question, what was Mirkwood's old name before it got all corrupted? Greenwood. Nailed it. <laughs> See, I know the stuff about well the done. stuff. Well done. Maybe the, like the, the non-fiction <laughs> bullshit stuff from beforehand. I know. All right. <laughs> Specifically, this is a book question. Okay. How old is Frodo when he leaves the Shire? Oh, he's 50. He is much older in the book than he is in the movie. Correct. He is 50 years old. Because in the book, there's like a 20-something year gap between when he first gets the ring and when he leaves. Uh, yeah, a little bit less than that, yes. Which I understand some. why the movie made that change, just make it seem a bit more... Um, oh, everything had to have the... There were stakes. You couldn't sit around for ages planning a, like, leaving the way that mm. it's set out in the book. Because Elijah yes. Wood is now about 50 and still looks the same age. so it, That's true. Yep. So it would, yeah. My God. Yep. He's almost, <laughs> no. <laughs> almost. Wow. He goes the same age as Ian McKellen from the first movie now. What? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Time is crazy. Who was it? I think it was Julian that said once, and I have to agree, that Viggo Mortensen is not an attractive man, but as Aragorn, incredibly oh. attractive. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Yes. Oof. Mm. Yeah. I think we anything agree. else, it's like, eh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, Eloise, you know how we have the three elven rings? Mm -hmm. They are Nenya, Naya, and Vilya. Yep. Who forged the rings and where? Uh, that would be, <laughs> let me pronounce it right, Celebrimbor. <laughs> Yep, you've got to have that rolling, rolling R in there. I cannot tell you how fucking annoying that was. 
the oh, the let roll me, your let, let me speak ethereally <laughs> by rolling my arse all the time. No, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Bonjour. Sorry. Some, but roll I mean, your arse. Cheese eating surrender monkeys. If you watched Rings of Power and that was something that you really enjoyed, that's fine. I'm very sorry for making you sad by saying it was fucking <laughs> annoying. <laughs> Uh, and he forged it in Eregion. He did. Well done. We forged them, I should say. In his okay. hubris, in his hubris of of deciding that he could forge rings outside of uh, Sauron. Think well, Anatar technically. It was Sauron. <laughs> well, yeah, it was I know. still we all Sauron. Know it was Sauron. He just but changed Anatar, his name. Anatar, the Lord of Gifts. <laughs> That's it. All right, so out of those three rings, Nenya, mm. Naya, and Vilya, which one does Gandalf wear and who gave it to him? <gasps> fuck. Um, <laughs> okay. No, no again, fuck is the incorrect. <laughs> All right. Um, Nenya belongs to Galadriel. Oh, I can't remember which two belong to the you... other two. So, so originally, so Galadriel gets Nenya. Uh, I think Valia goes to the High King Gilgalad and, oh, what was the other one? <laughs> what was the third one again? <laughs> Naya. Fuck, apparently. Naya, that's it. Yeah, I fuck. think, I think, I'm so sorry, we're swearing so much in this episode. <laughs> we are, we are swearing a lot more than we usual. We don't usually swear this much. It's all right, I... Get... I... Super excited. I, I always mark the explicit tab when I upload these. Okay, great. Um, <laughs> Naya, I think, is Kierdan the Shipwright's ring. And when Gilgalad dies uh, at the end of the Second Age in the Battle of the La or the, the, yeah, the Battle of the Last Alliance against Sauron, he passes his ring on to Elrond. And I'm pretty sure it's Kierdan who gives his ring to Gandalf, but I can't remember when. I have a feeling he has it during the Lord of the oh, Rings. I'm not asking you. I'm not asking you when. I'm asking you which uh, one. Which one? I think it's Kierdan's, and I think he gives it to Gandalf. Which ring is that? Nenya, Naya, or Vilya? Naya. You got it. <laughs> yeah. You got it. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Naya, Naya, the Ring of Fire. Yes. And K Kierdan, the shipwright, gives it to Gandalf. Yes. I honestly can't well remember why or when. Um, you really, really kind of like deduced your way through that one. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she People was stalling so for time impressed. while she looked it up on Google. No. I yeah. <laughs> I'm, Is that I'm a second it. screen I see there? No, shut up. Stop <laughs> it. I'm not. Fuck you. I'm not cheating. <laughs> I need everyone to know oh. I'm not cheating. <laughs> she gets somehow Lord Sounds of the Rings like trivia just brings out the worst in Eloise. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ready for the next one? Yes. What is the elven name for Rivendell? Imladris. Oh, got it. One. Well done. The the last homely house. <laughs> oh. There you go. All That's right. a Hobbit Here... reference. They only refer to it as that in The Hobbit. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Nice bit of trivia there. There you go. Um, okay. Where did the meeting of the Ents always take place? Oh, this was... Um, this the... is the one that stumped Ent Stephen Colbert. That stumped Stephen Colbert. It's Durndingle. Had to put this in. Durndingle. Durndingle. Yeah. Because he thought got you'd super get that angry one. that he couldn't yep. remember. <laughs> and I only know because I know about that piece of trivia. <laughs> I just remember that. <laughs> I, I knew you would. You're flying through these, Eloise. <laughs> only one, two, three, four more left that I gathered. Oh, yeah. I should have got more. All right. What race is Aragorn? Uh, he. Um, That's racist. Is... You can't ask that. He's blood of Numenor, and he's part of the Dúnedain, the men of long-lived lives, basically. Yep, got it. Yes, because he is descended from the Numenorians that survived the sinking of the island. Calamity. Yes, he. Uh, well, obviously, he's descended from um, Elendil um, and Isildur. 
Um, Who we see in the Rings of Power. We do see them in the Rings of Power. And they are descended from Elrond's brother, Elros. So Elrond and Elros are half elven and they were given a choice that they could either take on full elvish blood lineage or they could become human as such. And Elrond chose to be an elf and Elros chose to become the first High King of Numenor and uh, chose uh, the Doom of Man. Uh, He lived to be about 500-something years old and, yes, and then there was all, all of his descendants from there, basically. Because I believe Aragorn in the, what was that? What was that? Poorly. (laughs) Poorly. Uh huh. (laughs) Um, Because I was going to say, I believe Aragorn in the books, and I'm assuming the movies too, is about eighty years old when the events of the. He's eighty-one, I think. Mm. He's in his eighties. I thought he was eighty-seven. Yeah, sorry, you're right. Eighty-seven. Yes. I know. Actually, reading all this, it was interesting. His son, after he ascended to the throne of Gondor, mm-hmm. his son, when he was born, never got the choice to be an elf or a man, but still had, due to his bloodline, still had long life and looked 20, well into his 60s. Yes. What's his name? Which was is it not... El- um, I think. Is it Elrohir? Some, something like that. Can't remember. <laughs> um, Eldarian. Eldarian. Oh, Eldarian. Eldarian. That's right. I think Elro yes. here is uh, one of Elrond's sons. Actually, he has two sons. Mm. So he has two sons. I know Tolkien. Ar- Tolkien never really fleshed out a lot of the stuff that happened after. No, he Lord had like rings. notes, uh, and basically, he like the history of Middle Earth was supposed to go for another few more ages to the point where it would be like the seventh or the eighth age. Um, Hmm. where it would get to us, human history here on Earth. So basically Middle Earth is supposed to be like a lost ancient history of Earth and we're currently in the seventh or the eighth age or something like that. And eventually there's supposed to be like an apocalypse called the, what is it, the Dago Dagalath. I think it's yeah, called. Yeah, that, that, that's it. That's it I where think. everyone is sent, it's very Christian oriented actually, where everyone's kind of like, uh, rises from the dead again and Morgoth comes back and then someone's supposed to fight Morgoth. But there's different writings as to who would actually verse Morgoth, whether it would be um, uh, Eärendil or it would be Glorfindel or someone. It, it's never He never really wrote anything, so there's no way to say this is canon yeah. because he wrote many different versions and notes and never actually settled on anything. So people can just argue no. over it forever. Write fan fiction, yes. people. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> It's funny, I, I watched a thing the other day on Tolkien where they were talking about how Tolkien hates allegory when he was writing. Mm. And they said, yet his entire writing is full of allegory. Oh, yeah. He, he's a very... You just... <laughs> bit of a hypocritical man, really. He he says yeah. very vehemently that, the, like, it has nothing to do with World War One, even though he was heavily influenced by World War One. Mm. Um, But we'll say, like... Sauron and the orcs aren't the Nazis, or well, they wouldn't have been Nazis in World War One, I suppose. They were just like the yeah, German enemy, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it, it's funny how he's vehemently denied that it has anything to to do with that, mm. but you can still draw a lot of parallels. Yeah. The video I was watching was specifically about how authors, even if they intend not to put subtext and meaning in, still end up doing it just through the process of writing. Pretty much. Because you, you literally can't help it. I mean, you write from your experiences, and we've spoken about this on the po- podcast before. Like, you write what yeah. you know. So, how can you not write with allegory? Mm. Anyway, ne- next question. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I've only got a few left. You're getting through these a lot faster than I thought you would. Ah. That's Quick, right. Look all up right. more. <laughs> oh, I, I can. All right. What is Mount Doom's actual name? Uh, ooh. Um, Doom Mountain. <laughs> oh, you got it. Doom Mountain. <laughs> well done, Julian. Orodurin. Uh, Orodurin. Orod- yeah, yeah, you you got it. Yes. <laughs> there's actually two. There's actually two names it goes under. Oh, okay. Orodurin so was the Sindarian name. Mm-hmm. Given to be it, like a I black, a black speech again, name. Again, I th- I believe in Sindarian. Again, the literal translation of Mount Dune is Amon Amar Amon Amar. 
um, oh, I cannot pronounce Elvish. Amon <laughs> Amath. Oh, Amon Amath. Go. Yes. Okay. Yes. Which I also believe is a quite famous um, symphonic metal band. Probably got it from the book then. <laughs> no, I think it was the other way around. <laughs> yeah, okay. Sorry, sure. they are not symphonic metal. Amon, Amon and Marth are a Swedish melodic death metal band. They 100% took it from Lord of the Rings. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. They were probably <laughs> at, around at the same time. It could, an argument could be made. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> All right. All right. I haven't let Here's Julian a... try to answer any of these questions, by oh. the way. I'm just jumping in you're with too, them. I you're apologize. too excited about Tolkien. Too eager. Julian, you I can handle the next anyway. one. <laughs> you can handle the next one. All right. Sure. This is actually a multi-part, multi-part question for this next one. Ooh, okay. So we know there are many ages of Middle Earth. We're not going to talk about the time of the lanterns or the time of the trees. I can tell you stuff. about them oh, if you damn, want. Damn, because I know you, all I'm about sure... those ones. I know. Jul- <laughs> that's Julian's area of expertise. So we're talking about yep. the first, second, and third, and fourth potential ages of Middle Earth here. Mm-hmm. What events signaled the change of the ages in each one? Ooh, so each one, you. each one changed with a major event. What were the, the events that signaled the coming of a new age? Uh, I know that the second one ends with the the last alliance. Yep, that is the and second the one. The third one yep. ends with um, the final battle and Frodo passing from Middle Earth. I, I don't know anything else. The, oh, the third age actually is kind of interesting because I always thought it was like for, like the actual destruction of the ring, but I have a feeling that Gandalf be, says something know. about how once the last ship leaves was was the official end of the third age. So I think the answer to that one's a little bit tricky. But Julian is correct that the end of the, the second age is the Battle of the Last Alliance yep. and Sauron the, falling. The source that I found said the third age ended as you said, at the War of the Ring and the destruction of the defeat of Sauron and the destruction of the One Ring. Yeah, cool. So, um, what what was the first age? And the source I've actually had the end of the Fourth Age. Oh, I don't. Okay, the the end of the Fourth Age is interesting because I don't really know again because things weren't really fleshed out. A yeah, lot, but we can talk about that in a second. The end of the First Age is um, basically um, the defeat of Morgoth. And the rending of Middle Earth because a whole part of Middle Earth uh, is essentially like destroyed and falls into the sea. Uh, and the gods raise up the island of Numenor for man as a gift to man for helping them defeat Morgoth. Was, am, am I remembering correctly? Was when Numenor was at its height, was the earth round at that point or was it with the no, destruction it's... of Numenor the earth became round? No, no, no. That was be- that was before. That was the end of the first age. So essentially, okay, gotcha. oh, actually, oh, I always get. Hang on, let me think for a second because I do get them mixed up. While she's thinking, no. yeah, when when oh, I think it's Arda it? is the name of the entire world yes. that Middle Earth is situated on. It was originally created flat. It was so it was flat. So Balerion. So flat Earth is out there. You've got your evidence. <laughs> <laughs> so Beleriand is a section of Middle Earth that basically falls into the sea, is completely destroyed yep. uh, during the battle of, of everyone fighting Morgoth, essentially. Which we do see glimpses of in the first episode of the first season of Rings of Power. Yeah, I have a feeling that the Earth is made round after the destruction of Numenor because what this is spoilers for Rings of Power, basically. <laughs> For future seasons, if they get this far, if they don't get it cancelled before they get to it, because this is the exciting part. Basically, what happens is um, our Farazon, who is the last king of Numenor, who's the dickhead currently in Rings of Power. He is a real dickhead in that show, he is isn't a real he? Dickhead. He, he, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, he, Sauron is actually on Numenor at this point and convinces him to to say essentially that the gods are keeping immortality from man and that's not fair and our pharazon is like yeah you're right it's not fair i want to be immortal as well so he takes like a battalion of men to sail over to um valinor the undying lands 
And the thing about that was that the gods had, like, you know, um, had always said, never try to sail to our lands, essentially. You, can, you do not sail part, like, to the west further than what you can see, Numenor. So, like, if you sail to the west out of sight of Numenor, big trouble because you're you're heading to the Undying Lands, basically. And our Pharazon's group of men get there. They they actually breach the shore of one of the islands, and I forgot the name of the island that they that they get to. So like, it's kind of hard to explain, but there's like it's like kind of like that. <laughs> like as that you describe it in an audio medium. Oh my god! Okay, kind of she like moved her long... one hand up and one hand down. <laughs> it's a long thin island, um, but it's got like smaller islands sort of in front of it, and. Uh, they reach one of the main islands just off the coast of of uh, Valinor, and basically the gods are really angry, so they they cause an earthquake, and all of like the men who got there are buried alive. And because you can't die in the Undying Lands, <laughs> they're probably still alive. <laughs> buried under all that rock and then also as consequence because of their hubris they uh drown the island of Numenor and that's how Sar Sauron is defeated then uh so that's how he loses his corporeal form essentially so his spirit flees back to Middle Earth uh and sort of settles in Mirkwood and that's how he becomes the necromancer which you hear about in The Hobbit and then Gandalf sort of defeats him and he flees to Mordor again and that's where he like gets the orcs to build the tower of Baradur. Um what was the question again? I like the money pit. <laughs> <laughs> I I got super involved in my explanation that I forgot we were talking about. Um I think I think we were talking about the what signal so the, the end of the first age, age. with the defeat of Morgoth. That's there right. you go. Yes. Long story I did, short, I did <laughs> sidetrack you with the question of when when um, Arda became round, which wasn't technically part of the question, but I'm no, pretty sure I just that's asked. right. I was trying to get to that. I was trying to get to that. I'm pretty sure that once Numenor is is destroyed, Valinor is removed from Arda and becomes the heavens essentially, and then Arda becomes a globe, a rounded globe, so that you can never sail back to Valinor, or it might have been at the end of, of Morgoth when he was defeated. I can't remember. I might be getting those two incidents mixed up. I'm very sorry. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> How <could> okay. <laughs> I mean, there's Julian's a... Julian's very a, disappointed. <laughs> yeah. It's one of those things that I kind of wish Rings of Power had the rights to the Silmarillion because I yeah. wish... I really wish it, it. We could see like. I think it's is it. Ah, uh, what's it's Valinor, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, and I wish we could see like the early days of the elves, and especially the first kinslaying. Yes, like you know, I think the would trees, have been so cool to see the story of Morgoth, everything to do with the Silmarils, everything to do with Feanor seeking revenge, mm. and and all of those battles. Uh, you know, the the love story of Beren and Luthien the secret kingdoms, everything that happens in Beleriand, like all of that. like The is fall of, oh, what is it? The fall of Gondolin. Gondolin, Would have yes. been amazing to see. Oh, that story is amazing in terms of like what happens. But unfortunately, Tolkien never really fleshed any of those stories out as an actual fictional literary mm. story. He just wrote like histories, like a textbook. So th there's no actual novel um and that's what i find really frustrating is that that the the tolkien estate holds all of those rights so very closely that no one's allowed to actually do anything with them and that's what i find really disappointing about rings of power because there is so much that they could do and tell and show and can't and mm. so they just end up having to make stuff up and the stuff they make up isn't bad Whatever reason, I just really hate the writing. It's like, fill it's, it's so filling in the gaps as best they can, and maybe yeah. an argument could be made they're not doing it as well as they could be. I just think it's poor writing, though. Like I don't it, have. A I'll be very with interested to see. Yeah, with the new yeah, writers. I think third season, season they're getting a whole new writers' room. I'll be interested interested to see if it 
if there's a noticeable change. I do want to do a deep dive into Rings of Power with you, though, Brighton, so yep. I think we'll have we'll to do that in a special episode. Because Julian hasn't yes. seen Reeds of Power, and he's just nodding along now. <laughs> I've seen the first season. I haven't seen the second season yet. Ah, okay. Well, watch the second season. Um, so the source I found, which was, I will quote my source here, it's TolkienGateway.net. Right. I got this source from. Um, apparently, the end of the fourth age is when the last ship of the elves sails into the west. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't I thought they were all gone by then because I thought the last ship sailed with um oh, well technically Sam went off into Valinor or it was assumed that he did because he disappeared yeah, and Gim- in his late Gim- stages Gimli, of Gimli um Gimli is allowed to go to Valinor with Legolas and all that happens many many decades after um lord of the rings finishes yeah yeah because the ship the ship we see at the end of lord of the rings is not the last ship it's just a ship yeah that's true yeah well bonus question who do you think was on the last ship on the very last ship the very last ship the Uh, last of the elves uh, leave well it was kirdan because he was the one who was yep (laughs) driving the ship i honestly don't know I don't know anything no. about that, so I don't know. No, that's all right. According to the source, I don't um, it was. I think it was Sam. Was it Sam? Not. Uh, let's see. Was Sam like before that? No, because apparently it was never actually given an official date. Apparently it was just mentioned mm-hmm. in some of the appendices from Lord of the Rings, apparently. I'm just looking at the sources here, but it, no date was ever specifically given, but it's thought to be after Sam leaves. Oh, okay. Um, so essentially, Keodan was right, and Celeborn. Oh, okay. I didn't realise Celeborn stayed in Middle-earth hmm. for so long. According according to this. Because he, he's on the boat in the movie. That's yeah. probably why I didn't think of it. Yes. The quest. The question it's, it's is: the whole thing. It's the whole thing that elves all eventually, like, essentially feel the call of the Undying Lands and mm. have to answer it. And, and like I read in one of the books, um, uh, the nature of Middle Earth is that essentially elves, if they stay on Middle Earth long enough, um, they will essentially like become so old and feeble that they lose their minds. Um, mm. And they lose their grace, so they have to go back to Valinor at some point. Like, there's there's no staying in Middle Earth. Yeah. Yes, but the question that that Rings of Power asks is, where is Celebor? <laughs> Why we don't we Celeborn? don't know yet. Why is Celebor? <laughs> we don't know. There the was the yet. there was that fan theory that um oh well I won't won't say anything. We'll save, no, we'll we'll save we'll it leave for that. the episode. We'll yeah, save it for that episode. All right. <laughs> Final question, and probably the easiest one to answer out of all of them, to be honest. I'll be so embarrassed if I don't get it now. Yep. <laughs> Who is Tom Bombadil? <laughs> <laughs> That's not that. No, easiest no. question. <laughs> no, it's he's a lovable scamp. He's that, an annoying rogue. Um, no one really knows. Uh, I like to. I was going to say. Very googling funny. googling that question gives you people have written literal essays about who they yes. think tom bombadil is i think he's he's no he's literally no one i'm pretty sure he's like tolkien never gave an answer to who he was i like the theory that he is um eru Iluvatar, the the uh one creator who's basically god god of gods um i like to think he's doing like a meet joe black kind of thing you know where he's like, <laughs> I'm sick of being God. I'm gonna put myself into this in, this mortal's weirdo's body and just prance around. <laughs> Funniest death scene ever, by the way. What? In Meet Joe Black. Oh, I, you know, I've not actually seen Meet Joe Black. I haven't either. Brad Pitt getting hit by two cars, and it's just cartoonishly oh, hilarious yes, the way he bounces have... around seen that scene and you sent it to me i was like what the hell is this mm. <laughs> is this some comedy sketch and like nope that's was no, it in- was real it was in the middle of a drama movie <laughs> i was about to ask was it intended to be like that i don't think it was and yet 
I laughed for that a very was the, long time. That was the take <laughs> that they went with. <laughs> and that was it. Uh, gosh. All uh, right. Google special... it, if you haven't seen it before. I, I will after this. Uh, special bonus question. Which mm -hmm. body part did Viggo Mortensen break when he <laughs> kicked the helmet? <laughs> <laughs> it was his toe. Finger. His toe. His big toe. <laughs> Nose. Big toe. <laughs> Toes. I never would have guessed that. I never would have guessed that. You idiots. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Well, that's all I've got, Eloise. You did very well. Thank Only you. missed I... yeah. one question. And that Which was what year was Lord of the Rings published? Yes, and technically Tolkien's name. <laughs> and technically Tolkien's name. <laughs> to be fair, no one really knows. To... I've I mean, already it forgotten could... it. <laughs> Quick, what was his name? John. I've already forgotten yep. the others. <laughs> Ronald. No, John Jol Ronald. Jolkin, Rolkin, Rolkin, Tolkin. Ra Ra John Ronald Raul. Raul. Rule. Real? I can't remember. Ruel, I think. Ruel. <laughs> Raul. Raul. <laughs> yes, just the year. Couldn't re couldn't remember the year. Very good. Which is terrible. But in in looking all this stuff up, and I've been on YouTube a bit. There's so many theory, like even things about the blue wizards. Mm. Which, if anyone out there doesn't know, there were five wizards sent to Middle Earth. Yes. You had Gandalf the Grey, Saruman the White, Radagast the Brown, who we see in all the movies. And then you have just two blue wizards that disappeared into the east. Yeah. They were depressed. And Yeah, probably. It's Why were their robes were... blue? It's thought that mm. they were corrupted by, mm. not Sauron specifically, but by like the, the forces of evil that are out there, yeah. essentially. And there's people on YouTube making like... Yeah. Forces of evil. Roaming <laughs> bands of evil. <laughs> they just come out of nowhere. That's their metal <laughs> band name. Roaming band of evil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but there's um they're saying there's people online making hour long videos about this, essentially that boils down to we don't know just Tolkien never wrote about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and like <laughs> That's what I don't understand is is that people will spend hours and hours trying to work out and come up with theories, but then end with, but we don't know because there's no there's no actual written words about it. So like, well, <laughs> you can yeah. only assume. And the thing is, Christopher Tolkien never actually wrote anything himself, as far as I know. No. He just compiled all of his father's writings. Yeah, and I never really quite understood that like that he would spend so much time and I think it was because he didn't want to live in his father's shadow or f he didn't feel like he had the right to try and make anything out of his father's work. It was just all about providing us with like the the works presented in a way that was kind of almost not easy to digest but have the ability to read it and have it out there, which is fine, mm. but it's like, when I, I remember years ago when the book Beren and Luthien came out, I was super excited because I thought, oh, my God, it's like they're going to tell the story of Beren and Luthien. It's like, no, he just basically compiled the three separate versions that Tolkien wrote that and never finished on either on any of them and was just kind of like presented going, here's how the story was originally and here's how it changed when it was included in the Silmarillion and here's the lay of that that he wrote about it as well. I'm like, oh, mm. I want the so actual So he's essentially story. just going, so he's essentially just saying, here's his first draft and here's yeah. the actual story. He, yeah, it's literally here's, a, here's three separate drafts of this story. Because mm. the thing is, is that, again, Tolkien never finished their story in terms of we don't really know what happened to them. They um, they were both killed by Morgoth and they were both risen from the dead, essentially, and they were able to... Um, they were the first elf-human couple. That. <laughs> the first yep. zombies of Middle-earth. They were first elf-human couple. And then they had a son. Um, oh, Dior, I think, is their son who is Elrond's grandfather? Say but Dior made perfumes. <laughs> um, I could be wrong on that. Can't quite remember. Anyway, so 
but then after they have their one son, they disappear. Like there's never any action. Probably killed con- them. <laughs> there's no conclusion. All that to elf money. But, yes, all that. I Brayton, I think Julian's not taking this seriously. How dare he not you take a fictional universe complete? seriously? The money pit. <laughs> they completed that story. Doesn't insist upon itself. <laughs> Um, yeah, so there's no, there's no real ending to their story. They just kind of like disappear and we don't know what happened to them. And that happens a lot with a lot of characters where they just disappear and you don't know what happened to them. Because he just went, ah, I've had enough of this work now. Well, it was literally because he got, he went on to working on other parts of the story and other parts of the histories. And like in the end, the only reason why he wrote Lord of the Rings was because he wrote. 16 different elvish languages and went what are we gonna do with these languages i don't know i'll write a story for (laughs) yeah that is like my favorite piece of tolkien trivia is that he he wrote the story of more like i've made up this language now i need a world to set this in yeah (laughs) he literally worked worked his way backwards basically yeah and i i also love him and c.s lewis were very good friends in real life (laughs) and he hated (laughs) narnia (laughs) <laughs> they yeah they were very i think specifically yeah. because it was full of allegory yeah <laughs> it's just <laughs> what do you mean santa claus just fucking shows up and gives them their like things that they need <laughs> that is so random though so strange. <laughs> the inclusion it's... of santa claus yes like tolkien has to has to describe oh this this sword is important because it it belonged to these 15 different people and let me flesh out each of their stories about how they connect to the world and then C.S. Lewis is just in the go and then Santa shows up. <laughs> then again, we can't criticise C.S. Lewis when Tolkien did the same thing with Bombadil. That's true. Yeah. He, Bombadil he... just shows up, says they, gives them swords. Yes, that and is then true. pisses off get... never to be seen again. Maybe he got angry because C.S. Lewis just went, Bombadil Santa, and I'm just going to put Santa in my story. Well, Tom- don't forget, he did dance with naked hobbits on a hill before he pissed off. He did. He did. Mm. <laughs> Take off your that, clothes and let us frolic in the fields. <laughs> that's a bizarre scene to include. Sure, People talk okay. about that scene in It, but no one ever <laughs> mentions the four <laughs> naked hobbits dancing with this man on a hill. <laughs> It, oh, I completely get why they cut it out of the movie, and I think it that was the right so decision. Superfluous. You know what? I would I, kind of have liked to have seen it filmed somehow. Con- I, controversial opinion. I hate Tom Bombadil as a character. I find him so like, what is he doing here? It's so unnecessary. It means um, nothing. If I bet you... Dominic Monaghan is really packing a dog. <laughs> he seems like the kind of bloke who would be. Jesus. Um. If you want to see the Tom Bombadil scene <laughs> adapted, there was actually a Soviet adaption of Lord of the Rings, oh, which the included anime. no, not an anime, a live action. What? Which in- I live have action. never heard of this. Oh my goodness! Look it up. Soviet what? cinema. I wouldn't say it's peak Soviet cinema. It feels like it was a made-for-TV movie, but they adapted uh, Lord know. of the Rings. <laughs> I wow. thought you were going to say it was a special kind of adaptation there, Brayton. No, it, no, it was a apparently Lord serious adaptation. <laughs> but it, yeah, it, um, the whole thing might be on YouTube, or at least there's definitely clips of it. But they do adapt Tom Bombadil, and yeah, it, it's something like he was Lord of the Rings that night. <laughs> <laughs> I will, I will say, despite, despite. Um, potential objections to season two of Rings of Power, I did think Tom Bombadil was well done. Oh, he was perfect in, in terms of... I he actually was just really the right, enjoyed... He was just the right amount of annoying. <laughs> mm, I, actually, I actually enjoyed his scenes probably the most out of the whole series, to be honest. But I don't know why. Really, it was just... They captured his spirit well, um, mm. but we can talk more about that when we do yes. a special episode on Rings of Power. Yeah, but just for me, Tom Bombadil was a highlight of season two. (laughs) 
I like that Tom Bombadil is basically like an NPC, um, but he's like a level 20 and Tolkien was like, oh shit, this story's going to be over in five minutes if I keep him. Oh, and he wandered off and decided not to actually do anything with... And he he had to add that one line in the Council of Elrod scene where it's like, oh, what if we just give the ring to Tom? He doesn't, is... he's not affected by it. And it's, oh, yeah. well, oh, he'll no, just he'll probably drop it one day. He'll, he'll yeah. lose it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he's, he's so flighty he won't care yes that's right i forgot that they also include yeah. talking about tom bombadil in the council of elrond again and i can't out, so. I, I can't help but think that when tolkien was writing that line he must have thought oh maybe this character doesn't have a purpose but i like him so i'm just going to put a line about how they can't just take it to him yes so we can move <laughs> the plot forward <laughs> And to be honest, any editor looking at that now would go and just be like, hey, why is this whole couple of chapters in here when, like, like Tom's going to come back, right? And he's going to, like, <laughs> help them. It's like, no, he's never mentioned again. No, no, they just move on. <laughs> yeah. He was a side quest. Hmm. So, you know, they, uh, they, they got the weapons that they needed out of the Barrow Downs uh, mm. and in which, like, so Mary's sword is the reason why he was able to stab the Witch King, which led to the Witch King losing some of his power so that um, Eowyn could finish him off. That's why that's important. But from a, the perspective of the movie, you don't need that. You don't need to know that the sword has to be a special sword. Just, yeah. No. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. Think about it. That's <laughs> it. Yeah. yeah. I will. I, I will say there are still fan forums and stuff online that decry the Peter Jackson adaptations. Well, oh, like I fine. can understand why, but but yeah, I I think there's no reason to. They are their own things, and they were magnificent films. They they did the books oh, yeah. justice. They did things that were unique to the movies. They did things that they had to do because movies and books are different mediums, and those books were huge. And for many, many years, people said this cannot be done. And mostly because it had been attempted before and wasn't done. Like you all remember the, um, what was the cartoon movie of Lord of the Rings that was made? Uh, yeah, um, with Lord of the Rings. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah, trying to think it was of the It was um, the, Rotoscope. The Lord of the Rings. No, no, yeah. no. I meant the name of the person because it was like the name of the person who, who directed it. Tolkien. No, <laughs> like that. That oh, it starts with B. Yeah, I know. I um, know. I'm, I'm looking it up. Thank you. Uh, where is it? Ralph Bak Bakshi. Bakshi, that's it. Where Bakshi, Ralph Bakshi's Bakshi. Lord of the Rings. Um, yes. and he, Which, he touted for... it as being the complete story <laughs> yeah, and then say. stopped it at the Battle of Helm's Deep and everyone came out of it going, what? What do you mean you? this was supposed to be the complete story? And then they tried to, like, make a part two but ran out of money. Yeah, it just ends. Yes. And my favourite part of that... Fine. Okay. Controversial opinion. <laughs> Controversial okay. opinion. I do think that he added that that fight scene in the second movie, the the wags and where Aragorn falls off the cliff, just so that they could have Vigo into the doors like that. Oh yeah, it's the only reason mm. that scene that exists, you... so he could come in later. And I would that argue door. that it was necessary. <laughs> yeah, the films the are lesser the door without is it. It's great. I love it. It's brilliant. It's perfect. That should have been the whole movie. They didn't need the extra fight. <laughs> just him, just him opening doors. Yeah. Just him opening doors <laughs> Back like that. Backlit. Yeah, I would have been very happy with that. <laughs> the other thing too to look up is um, the edit of Lord of the Rings, where it's only the scenes where two women talk to each other. Oh god! <laughs> it's one? five it's, seconds long. <laughs> it's one scene in Edoras where Eowyn talks to this um, little girl. <laughs> and that's it done I'm so bad. Yep. well i guess technically the mum does talk to the girl briefly before she puts her on the horseback that's true mm. <laughs> oh look we we can sit around talking about the bechdel tests but we don't need to i think let's let's leave lord of the rings yep. alone <laughs> all right well 
overall, well done, Eloise. Well, if we do this again, I'll have to pick some harder questions. Pick yeah, pick stuff from the Silmarillion. Let's see how well I do next. Actually, time. <laughs> one one I did see that pick from. Um, what's Treebeard's wife's name? Oh, um. Oh, it's Mrs. A, it's a, Treebeard. N- Mrs. Treebeard. Got no, it. it's like a. No, it's. Oh, it's Mrs. It's like Beard. Elvish... Treebeard's <laughs> first name is Tree. His last name is Beard. Mrs. Yeah. Beard. So it's Mrs. Mrs. Beard. It's, Mrs. A, Beard. it's an Elvish sounding name, and it starts with a T H. It's like thre, 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 Threndrill, Thrend, Threndrill, or something like that. Kind Thren, of. Yeah. It's it's not a Thren, T H. Threnual. No, it's not a T H. Oh, okay. Do you want to know? Friend, uh, yeah, okay, I don't know. Uh, Fimbrathil. Fim. Oh, okay. I must have been thinking the thrill at the end. <laughs> Fim- yep. Frimbeth- Frimbrathil. Fim- Fimbrathil. Fim- Assuming Fim- I'm pronouncing that right. Fimbrathil. Yes. Can't say it. Yes. That's why it's I a know sad it, thing. All, all the Ent wives were gone by the time of the Third Age. This, and they don't know where they are. And there's an end no. that was a mystery that was never um, solved because Tolkien never but wrote it. He left I it can to guarantee the you said. there are many video essays on YouTube discussing <laughs> where they could be. Probably, yes. But he deliberately Which, said again, that, ultimately goes down to we don't know because Tolkien never told us. Tolkien specifically said it is a mystery that I put into the books that I deliberately have no idea whether he doesn't know because he decided he didn't know where they went. And he said, sometimes there are just mysteries and they have to be They're probably re- still waiting re- in line for the bathroom. <laughs> if they all went to the bathroom together. <laughs> and we know how slow ants go. <laughs> <laughs> they are very slow. <laughs> Yeah. Oh dear. Well, thank All you very much. All chapters Brayden. of that book of just the ent moot, and yes. they do nothing. <laughs> we have just finished saying good morning. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> those those books would be so much shorter. Look, admittedly, whenever I do read the books, I do skip over the songs and the poems. I'm like, ah, yeah. Yeah, 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 let's get to this next bit. <laughs> yeah. Let's let's move the pot along, Tolkien. Oh dear. But yes, I have read the books. Oh gosh, I think at least five times. So here's a question for you, Eloise and Brayden. Mm-hmm. Uh, the movies are rated M, which means they're allowed one fuck in there somewhere. Ooh. Where, Where do you should put the it? Fuck be. <laughs> <laughs> Fly, you fucking fools. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I think that works for, for Fellowship. I think that's the perfect spot for it. Are we, are we going to talk one in each film or one in the one whole in trilogy? Each film because they're one, three in each one in each film. Yes. Hmm. We're in the second film. Hmm. I like to think it's when they realise oh, got um, it, got and it, Frodo got it. realise that they're just going in circles and they're just like, <laughs> oh, fuck. No, I got it. When Gandalf reaches through the window and pulls Sam through, going, fucking oh, Samwise Gamgee. That's a good one. I think in the second film, um, oh, was it in the second film when the when Theoden and Aragorn are arguing about calling Gondor for aid? I think it is, yeah, because it's at Helm's hmm. Deep, and Theoden should be, "Where was Gondor when the fucking Westfall <laughs> fell?" <laughs> or that Urukai who's up on the rock that gets shot with the arrow first. And he could just be like, uh, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Where in the third film? Oh, I know. When 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 Legolas enters, when Frodo's in bed, and he's like, hey, elf dude. And be like, you don't know my <laughs> fucking name, do <didn't> you? <laughs> he named everyone else except Legolas. Uh, no, I've got the it. Far away got look it. at his eyes. Like, oh, what was his name again? I can't remember. Hey, hey, hey you. elf guy. <laughs> <laughs> I love that fan theory that Frodo doesn't know Legolas's name. He never speaks to him. <laughs> they um, did introduce themselves. <laughs> the my choice, I think it's in Return of the King. We're talking the door opening scene. Was that Return of the King or Two Towers? No, no, that's Helm's. That's Helm's Deep and Two Towers. Two Towers. Okay, cool. You just need Aragorn walk through the door and someone just be like. Fuck. <laughs> Fuck me. Eowyn. <laughs> yeah. Eowyn's a- at the back. There you go. <laughs> uh, 
she wanted him so badly. I know, but yeah. you know, did Faramir's she did she nice. settle? Did she settle for Faramir? Oh, I don't know. Faramir's <laughs> a really nice guy. He's very loyal. Oh, he's that, he's a nice guy. Yeah. Oh, he's he's, nice he's guy. great. He's I didn't mean it lovely. To sound. I didn't mean he's it to sound. He's a real champ. He is that, that Faramir. <laughs> Look, David Wenham, lovely man. <laughs> I don't think anyone settles for David Wenham. No, you don't settle for David Wenham. <laughs> but between I, David Wenham the... and Viggo Mortensen as Aragorn? Yeah, oh, okay. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah come on. <laughs> I, that's one thing that I I was disappointed that they cut out of the film. And I know that they have a very small version of it in the extended version of, of Eowyn and Faramir falling in love. But there's there's a very lovely... A look. There's a ve- Yes, there's a very lovely chapter in the book about mm. them falling in love and... I appreciated that. <laughs> um, I think, yeah, so F word in the third film, um, <laughs> when Gandalf's crowning Aragorn and says, now ends the, the fucking third age. <laughs> uh, no, when Aragorn says to the hobbits, um, was it my friends, you bow for fucking no one. Yes. <laughs> Or um, Pippin as he looks around, like, fuck. <laughs> or the very, the very last line of the film. Well, I'm fucking back. <laughs> it would be perfect back in the first one when Pippin drops the skeleton down the well. Of course. And get, get, get Gandalf took. instead of saying "fool of a took," yeah, fucking took. Uh, fucking took. <laughs> or as Frodo's leaving on the on the ship in the third one, it's like, "Be a fuckers." <laughs> All right. I think and with that. On a bit mad now. I think we've sworn more than any other episode. <laughs> I do apologise, everyone. Spoilers warning, don't listen to this with your kids in the car. You can't put that warning at the end of the episode. <laughs> I, am, I tag it as explicit. If anyone ignores that tag, that's on them. Excellent. <laughs> oh, all right. If you would like to get in touch with us, you can do so on all of the socials, not helpful pod on Instagram, uh, Facebook, and TikTok. You can email us at nothelpfulpod at gmail.com. Um, and don't forget to like and subscribe and give us a review. Put the little stars on, on the podcast app. You know the thing. It takes a second. Bloop. With the stuff. I do feel like yes. we were particularly not helpful this episode too. We so really we were. should get five yeah. stars for that. Yes. Absolutely. It, Living up to the name. They do what they say. They do what they say on the box. Ex- five stars. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you very much once again, Brayton and Julian, for joining us this week. And we will once again see you next week or two weeks. No, it's two weeks. But <laughs> in two weeks' time. <laughs> Wherever you listen to us. You know what? You could be binging this all at the same time as all of the other episodes. We'll see you again in God, five Stop minutes. the recording, please. Okay. <laughs>